And now onward to my favorite Cisco device of all, the multi-layer switch. I love these babies. Multi-layer switches, layer 3 switches, whatever you want to call them, both refer to the same thing. And this doesn't just allow us to avoid configuring router on a stick. Multi-layer switches, what they are, it's a single device that is really a switch. You know, you could be on a multi-layer switch and not even know you are not on a regular old layer 2 switch. The deal is, if you give Cisco a little more money, or you give your switch vendor, whoever it is, a little more money, they will make your switch capable of also routing. Now, routing may not be running by default, and we'll talk about that, but the capability is going to be there. So we can have inner VLAN communication on the same switch, if it's an L3 switch, without the data ever having to leave the switch, and that is a lot more efficient. Now, what we're going to create here are a couple of switched virtual interfaces, SVIs. They represent a VLAN, and one SVI represents one VLAN. It's a very strict mapping deal, one SVI per VLAN, one VLAN per SVI. These are also called VLAN interfaces. I've heard that term come into casual conversation a little more often, and I, I would be prepared to see them referred to as VLAN interfaces, but again, the technical name is Switched Virtual Interfaces SVI. Now, on a Layer 3 switch, it's, the, configuring a logical interface like this is just like configuring anything else, any other interface. You go into config mode, which is actually going to create the interface, put an IP address on it, you know, and you're on your way. So what we're going to do is create this network. I've already got a little bit of the basics done as far as the IP addresses and the VLANs on the host. But you can see host 1 is in the 2110 slash 24 address space. It's also in VLAN 11. Host 3 is in the 3110 slash 24 space, VLAN 33. On the switch, I have two layer 3 switch addresses for us that we're going to be configuring on the switch itself. Interface VLAN 11, Interface VLAN 33. First troubleshooting tip, of course, as I'm sure you're noting, there's, there are a few things that carry over from router on a stick. You want to make sure that, say, the address you give Interface VLAN 11 is from the VLAN 11 address space. If it's not an address from that subnet, you're obviously going to run into some troubles. Now, same thing, of course, here with 33. We'll do a little bit of verifying here before we go around and you can see ran show IP route there. It's not much to see because the only thing configured on host 1 is that IP address. Now we'll go over to host 3 and it's the same deal, 3111. So all of the action I guess is happening on the switch. So let's go to our aptly named layer 3 switch and just a couple things I want to show you. We'll verify that VLAN 1, excuse me, port 1 is in VLAN 11 and port 3 is in VLAN 33. You'll notice all these other VLANs I created on this switch and that someone else created as well. I want you to get used to seeing a lot of VLANs here because sometimes when you're learning this, you see one VLAN or two VLANs, then you run show VLAN brief and you got 200 VLANs. One thing I like to do, you know, it's kind of easy if you're looking across here and saying, oh, okay, what port is, uh, what VLAN is port 1 in? It's easy to look over here and say, okay, it's 10 or 20, you know, because this isn't exactly a lined grid. It's really easy for your eyes just to go down or up one line as you're going across the screen when there's nothing to guide you. You know what I like to do? Just do that. Just do a right click and a mark, and then you just left click and drag. So if there's ever any question, because I've, I've had discussions with that over people, <laughs> with people in live environments. Oh, such and such port is in this VLAN. Well, no, it's not. Your eyes are skipping a line. So that's just an extra little real-world tip for you. So we got show VLAN brief. And really, let's do a quick show config. And you can see nothing fancy here. I've got port 1 in VLAN 11, port 3 in VLAN 33. And really, we're off to the races from there. We don't have to do anything on the host since we have an IP address there. So let's go ahead and create our VLAN interfaces or our SVIs. And it's just this simple. It's a conf T. And then it's simply interface VLAN followed by the VLAN number you're referring to, which is 11. And to give it an IP address from that space, oh, 
I let that throw me when the lines came up so soon. Address is always a good word to put in there. You'll notice I got a couple of up-down messages immediately. The interface changed state to up and the line protocol changed state to up, I'm sure. There it is. Sometimes you'll just see the line protocol message. But if, as long as it's up and up after you verify it, then you're in good shape. We'll go ahead and create interface VLAN 33. Got that address in there this time. And again, that's all there is to it. Never hurts to verify something. And you can do the show interface thing just as we do. We've been doing a fast interfaces throughout the course. Show interface VLAN 11. And a lot of this looks familiar. You might note that the hardware is actually listed as Ether SVI, hintity hint hint. There's your SVI. And we'll go ahead and do a show interface VLAN 33 as well. Same deal, up, up, hardware is SVI. So, so far we're in really good shape. Now, what else do we need to do? Because we've got layer three all set up here. We've got our IP addresses set up. We know we checked our hosts and our VLANs and all that. So let's go over to host one and send a ping over. And occasionally you lose two pings at the very beginning of a lab like this as it's learning the addresses and ARPing and whatnot. But uh, when you lose five, there's definitely a problem. So what I would do then is go to the central device of this, which would be my layer three switch. Well, let's take a look at the routing table. And this may be the ugliest result for show IP route you'll ever see. It says default gateway is not set. We've seen that before. But what's all this host, gateway, last use, total uses interface, ICMP, redirect cache is empty? What this means is that you forgot to turn IP routing on. Because as I hinted at least earlier on, on a layer three switch, routing is not on by default. Now you will do this sooner or later in a, in a lab. You're gonna do it sooner or later. Forget to turn IP routing on. Uh, it happens to all of us, so forgive yourself, but really watch that on your exam. And again, be familiar with this output of show IP route when IP routing actually isn't turned on. After all that, you'll be happy to know that it's a very simple process to turn IP routing on. It's just the IP routing global command. And now when we run show IP route, now that looks a little bit more like our routing table, right? Listen, I don't care how long you've been doing this. One time you'll see that and your brain just for a millionth of a second says, where are my code tables? Where's everything? Have I forgotten <laughs> Have I forgotten how to route? You didn't forget how to route, you just forgot to turn it on. Happens to everybody. Uh, on some models, and I'll show you the, this command in print uh, in the next video, I'll make a very short video because I've got another image I want to show you. You may have to run a command called SDM prefer land base routing. And if you do that, you actually have to reload the switch. Again, this exam is not version specific, so it's not going to say on which of the following 12 versions do you need to do this. But on this particular switch, you do not need to do it. You just need to enable IP routing. And that is it. So, so far, you know, hey, things are looking really good. We got IP routing on. We got our layer three switch up and running. So let's go over and see if we can send our ping from the host and it's looking uh, it's looking a little rugged here yeah that's uh, zero out of five is never a good percentage so what command could we use to kind of see what's going on here what do you think we could debug what what are we sending we're sending IP packets so let's ping 3111 again and pardon the screen jerk here for a second, but we're getting a word there at the end of the line that is never good. Unroutable. Unroutable. Why, are, why is this unroutable? Where should we go now to look and see why it's unroutable? How about show IP route? Because you got to look at the host routing table, whether you know, it's a Cisco router or Microsoft uh, device, you know, whether it's a Mac, whatever. And in this particular case, we don't have a what set, a gateway of last resort. We don't have a default gateway sort set for a host device. And we gotta have that, whether it's router on a stick or working with SVIs. One or the other, 
you, you got to have a default gateway. Now, of course, there are different ways to do that with a default gateway on a PC. Of course, you know, just let DHCP do, your, do its magic there and assign a default gateway. What could we do on a router? What could we do on a router to assign a default gateway? Because I had this set up in router on a stick and I didn't show you, but I want to show you now. A good way to do it, one way to do it, is a default static route. And of course your next top IP address comes at the end. That's not enough to do that on one. You gotta do it on all of them because if you don't of course the pings would leave but they wouldn't have any real way to get back. So now we've got our default gateway set. Let's go to router one. I got called by console message. Just be a second. And now we've got a gateway of last resort, 21111. Notice, of course, just like in the router on a stick lab, I set the default gateway to the interface VLAN IP address that's in my VLAN, which in this case at host 1 would be 21111 and host 3 would be 31111. And now let's start sending those pings. And I forgot to turn my debug off, but you can see that my success rate there was 60%. And again, at the first, that's not bad for an SVI config because it takes a second to cook, if you will, when you send your first packets. But you'll notice after that, it became 100%. And that's what we want to see. And that was the trick. So a couple of little things we ran into here. One of them was on the switch. We forgot to turn on IP routing. That was okay. But after that, we still couldn't send pings. But now, instead of just being an admin that just blindly stares at the config and tries to see what you did wrong, you know what you can do to see what's going on on that router when it's sending packets. You run debug IP packet. When you actually see what's going on, instead of just guessing at your config, I mean, you're miles ahead of the game. So you saw what was going on. You're like, okay, if they're not leaving, why aren't they leaving? because they weren't even getting to the switch. Switch didn't have anything to do with it. And this is another lesson, I'll just mention it one time as we wrap up this section, that whenever you're working with router on a stick or you're working with layer three switching in this kind of situation, you can't focus your troubleshooting on the central device because that's not always where the trouble is. Sometimes the trouble is on the host and if it's on the host, most likely it is a lack of a default gateway. I'm going to create a very short video here for you in a moment to wrap up this section. I will have that land-based routing command for you in print so you can see what's going on with that. And also I want to show you another symbol that is often used for a layer 3 switch. I don't think you're going to see it on your CSENT or CCNA exams, but for the real world I want you to see it so you know what the heck it is. So one more video and we'll be done. I'll see you there.